Hello, in this lecture we will find the area of the green shape in three different ways. In the drawing we have a circle. We know that the radius of this circle equals to 5 units and we also know that AC is tangent to the circle at point A and BC is tangent to the circle at point B and we know that angle ACB equals to 60 degrees and we want to find out the area of this green shape okay so, so first of all we will define the center of the circle as point O and uh, we will connect together points A and O by a straight line actually OA is the radius of this circle that equals to 5 units because of the fact that line segment OA starts from the center of the circle that is to say from point O and ends at point A that is a point on the circle itself therefore OA is the radius of this circle we will join together points O and B by a straight line OB is also the radius of this circle because it starts from the center of the circle and ends at point B that is a point on the circle itself therefore OB is the radius of this circle it equals to 5 units we have a rule that uh, states a tangent to a circle if we have tangent to this circle suppose that uh, Bx is tangent to this circle at point X and we have the radius that touches point X so the rule states that a tangent to the circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its tendency so I will read the rule again the rule states that a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its tangency so actually here in the, this drawing we have 
tangent bx tangent bx is tangent to this circle at point x and we have this radius that is drawn to the point of tangency that is to say to point x actually the radius touches point x therefore the tangent bx will be perpendicular to the radius that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees okay so in our drawing we have CB is tangent to the circle at point B and we have the radius that is drawn to the tangent point actually this radius touches the tangent the point of tangency that is to say point B therefore the tangent is perpendicular to the radius that is to say this angle is a right angle it equals to 90 degrees the same thing is about the other tangent CA is tangent to this circle at point A and we have the radius OA that is drawn to the point of tangency that is to say it is drawn to point A that is the point of tangency therefore the tangent CA is perpendicular to the radius that is to say this is a right angle it equals to 90 degrees Okay, and we also have a second rule that is two tangents theorem. Two tangents theorem states that if you have point that is that is outside the circle it is external common point P and from common point external common point P you draw two tangents to this circle PA tangent PA is tangent to the circle at point A and tangent PB is tangent to the circle at point B so from external common point P we draw two tangents to this circle according to two tangents theorem the length of those two tangents are equal that is to say PA equals to PB okay so two tangents the OM states that the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal so the length of those two tangents that are drawn from a common external point that is to say from point P the lengths are equal that is to say PA equals to PB okay so here we have 
common external point C and from common external point C we have two tangents to the circle CA and CB therefore according to two tangents theorem CA equals to CB CA equals to CB So CA equals to CB according to common the, to two tangents theorem Okay, so in the next step we will join point C and O by a straight line And we will focus on triangles AOC and triangle BOC. Okay, so Okay, we will focus on triangles AOC and triangle BOC, those two triangles. Actually, we will prove that those two triangles can go into each other. We know that BO of triangle BOC is equal to AO of triangle AOC. Both those two line segments are the radiuses of this circle, they are equal to 5 units. So AO equals to BO, both are the radiuses that are equal to 5 units. Okay, AO equals to BO equals to 5 units. And uh, we also know that BC equals to AC according to two tangents theorem. Okay. AC equals to BC or BC equals to AC according to two tangents theorem and the OC is a common side it belongs both to triangle AOC and OC side OC also belongs to triangle BOC so OC equals to OC actually it is a common side Okay, so OC equals to OC, it is a common side. So we actually proved that all the sides of triangle BOC can go into all the sides of triangle AOC. Therefore, we can deduce that triangle AOC is congruent to triangle BOC okay triangle AOC is congruent to triangle BOC according to side 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 rule
Okay, side 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 rule states that if you prove that all the sides of one triangle are equal to all the sides of the other triangles, then those two triangles can go into each other according to side 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 rule. Okay, so from the fact that triangle BOC can go into triangle AOC, we can derive that angle BOCO is equal to angle ACO. Angle Angle BCO is equal to angle ACO. Actually, those two angles, those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding Angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. Again, according to the rule that corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. So, if we define one of the angles as X, then the other angle will be also equal to X. Okay, so both those two angles will be equal to X. Okay, both those two angles will be equal to X because they are equal to each other. So, according to the drawing, we can say that x plus x must be equal to, two, to 60 degrees. That is to say, x plus x equals to 60 degrees. x plus x equals to 60 degrees, that is to say, 2x equals to 60 degrees, and if we divide this equality by 2, we will get that x equals to 30 degrees. x equals to 30 degrees. So, angle BCO equals to 30 degrees. And also angle ACO equals to 30 degrees. So actually, if we focus at the right triangle, triangle COA, in the right triangle COA or CAO, Tangents 30 degrees will be equal to OA over AC. Tangents 30 degrees will be equal to OA over AC. 
3 tangents 30 degrees equals to OA over AC. But we know that OA equals to 5 units, so we can substitute OA by 5. So it will be equal to 5 over AC. Tangents 30 degrees will be equal to 5 over AC. We know that tangents 30 degrees equals to 1 over root 3. So we substitute tangents 30 degrees by 1 over root C, 1 over root 3, 1 over root 3 equals to 5 over AC. Here we will multiply this equality by AC and we will get that AC over root 3 equals to 5 Okay, we got that AC over root 3 equals to 5. Here we will multiply this equality by root 3 and we will get that AC equals to 5 times root 3. Okay, so we found out that AC equals to 5 times root 3 units. And because of the fact that AC equals to BC, BC will be also equal to 5 times root 3 units. Okay. And uh, What is the area of triangle AOC? The area that is how we write it. This means the area of triangle AOC. So the area of triangle AOC will be equal to the base of the triangle AOC times the height to the base over 2. Again, the area of triangle AOC equals to the base of triangle AOC times the height over 2. So the area of triangle AOC equals to the base of triangle AOC times the height to the base over 2. So the base of triangle AOC is AO. The height is AC. Over two. So the area of triangle AOC equals to AO times AC over two. 
but what is the value of AO? AO is the radius of this circle and it equals to 5 units. It is given us in the question. So it equals to 5 times AC. We have already found out that the value of AC is 5 times root 3 all divided by 2. So we found out that the area of triangle AOC equals to 5 times 5 times root 3 over 2. 5 times 5 is 25. So I will write it down. The area of triangle AOC equals to 25 times root 3 over 2 square units. That is the area of triangle AOC. 25 times 3 over 2 square units. But we proved that triangle AOC is congruent to triangle BOC. Therefore, we can deduce that the area of triangle AOC equals to the area of triangle BOC. Okay? The area of triangle AOC equals to the area of triangle BOC. Okay? Because of the fact that those two triangles can go into each other, their areas are are also equal to each other. So the area of triangle AOC is equal to the area equals to the area of triangle BOC. And what is what is the area of uh, quadrilateral ABCO? The area of quadrilateral ABCO will be equal to the area of triangle AOC plus the area of triangle BOC. Again, the area of quadrilateral ABCO will be equal to the area of triangle AOC plus the area of triangle BOC. But we have already found out that the area of triangle AOC equals to the area of triangle BOC, so we can substitute the area of triangle BOC by the area of triangle AOC. And we'll, we'll get that the area of triangle A, the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to two times the area of triangle AOC. Okay? The area of triangle, the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to two times the area of triangle AOC. We have already found out that the area of triangle AOC equals to 25 times root 3 over 2 square units. Okay, so the area of quadrilateral ABCO will be equal to the area of triangle AOC that is 25 times root 3 over 2, 2 times the area of triangle AOC, so we will multiply it by 2. Here, 2 over 2 is 1. So 2 will get cancelled. So the area of quadrilateral ABCO will be equal to 25 times root 3 square units. Again, 
the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to 25 times root 3 square units. Okay? And what is the area of the green shape? The area of the green shape equals to the area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector AOB. Okay? If you subtract from the area of quadrilateral ABCO the area of segment AOB, we will get the area of the green shape. Okay? So I will write it down. Again, the area of quadrilateral ABCO this quadrilateral minus the area of sector ABO will be equal to the area of the green shape. The area of quadrilateral ABCO, this area minus the area of sector ABO, it equals exactly to the area of the green shape. Okay? The area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector ABO will be equal exactly to the area of the green shape. We have already found out that the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to 8, 25 times root 3. So the only thing that is left to find in order to find out the area of the green shape is to find out the area of sector ABO. So what is the area of this sector, A, sector ABO? The area of sector ABO equals to pi r square, that is the area of the circle, times angle AOB, the size of angle AOB, over 630 degrees. Okay, so the area of sector ABO equals to pi r squared, that is the area of the circle, times the size of angle ABO in terms of degrees, over 360 degrees. So we will find, we will find out the size of angle AOB according to the following rule. The rule states that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral equals to 360 degrees. Okay? The sum of the angles in any quadrilateral quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees Okay, the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. So according to that rule, 
we can say that in quadrilateral ABCO, the sum of its angles is 360 degrees. So 60 degrees, the size of this angle, plus 90 degrees, the size of this angle, plus 90 degrees, the size of this angle, plus the size of angle AOB, must be equal to 360 degrees, according to the rule that I stated. Okay. This equality is true according to the rule that I stated one minute ago. 60 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus angle AOB, that is the sum of the angles, the sum of the angles in quadrilateral ABCO must be equal to 360 degrees according to the rule that is stated. So here we have 60 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 240 degrees. So we will subtract 240 degrees from this equality and we will get that the size of angle ABO is equal to 360 degrees minus 240 degrees is 120 degrees. And again, ABO equals to 120 degrees. Okay. So, the area of sector ABO The area of sector ABO equals to pi r square times the size of angle AOB that is 120 degrees over 360 degrees. We know that r equals to 5, so r square is 5 square, 5 square is 25, so 25 pi 120 degrees over 360 degrees is 1 over 3 so we divide it by 3 so the area of triangle of the area of sector ABO equals to 25 pi over 3 square units. Okay? And we have already found out that the area of quadrilateral ABCD equals to 25 times root 3 square units. Okay, so we have the areas of quadrilateral ABCO, ABCO, and we have also the area of sector ABO. We will subtract the area of sector ABO from the area of quadrilateral ABCO, and we will get the area of the green shape. Okay? The area of the green shape equal to the area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector ABO, this sector.
again, they are uh, of the green shape equals to the area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector ABO. Okay, if we subtract from the quadrilateral ABCO the area of sector ABO, we will get the area of the green shape. So the area of the green shape will be equal to the area of quadrilateral ABCO that is 25 times root 3 square units minus the area of sector ABO that is actually 25 pi over 3 square units. it again again the area of the green shape equals to the area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector ABO that is to say to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units ok so we finish to find out the area of the green shape according to the first method And uh, we will find out the area of the green shape, this green shape, according to the second method. So, first of all, we will define the center of this circle as point O. And uh, from point O, we will join together points A and O by a straight line, and again AO is the radius of the circle that equals to 5 units and we also know this, this angle, that this angle is a right angle and we we'll join together points B and O by a straight line we know that BO is also the radius of this circle that equals to 5 units and we also know that this angle is a right angle and we also know that AC equals to BC according to two tangents theorem so we will also join together points C and O by a straight line
then we will extend CO until it touches the circle at point H Then we will draw a tangent to the circle at point H. We know that the tangent and the actually H O is the radius of the circle that equals to 5 units, the radius is drawn to the point of tangency that is point H, therefore this angle equals to 90 degrees and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. According to the rule that a tangent to the radius is perpendicular, a tangent to the circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its tangency. This radius is drawn to the ten to the tangent point that is to say to tangent to, to point H. Therefore the tangent is perpendicular to the radius that is to say this angle equals 90 degrees and this angle also equals to 90 degrees. In the next step we will extend C B until it intersects with the tangent and we will define the intersection point between CB and the tangent as point Q. Q is the intersection point between tangent between this tangent and CB and we will also extend CA until it intersects with the tangent we will define the intersection point between the tangent and, and CA as point P again point P point P is the intersection point between CA and the tangent and this tangent. Okay. So we know that we have here two right angles. I, I will prove again that uh, Triangles AOC and triangle BOC can go into each other. I have already proved it in the first method. I will prove it quickly. So we know that AC equals to BC according to two tangent theorem. Two tangent theorem. So, in triangles AOC and BCO, we know that AC equals to BC according to two tangents theorem. We also know that AO equals to BO. Both those 
line segments or sides are the radiuses of this circle that equal that equal to five units. Again, AO equals to BO equals to five units, and CO is a common side. It belongs to both triangles, so CO equals to CO. It is a common side. Okay, CO equals to CO, it is a common side, so we proved that all the sides of triangle A, B, of triangle C, B, O are equal to all the sides of triangle A, O, C, therefore, triangle A, O, C is congruent to triangle B, C, O, according to side 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 rule okay triangle ACO is congruent to triangle BCO according to side 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 rule therefore from the fact that those two triangles can go into each other we can derive from that that angle BCO equals to angle ACO those two angles are equal to each other okay angle BCO equals to angle ACO and if we define one angle as X then the other angle also will be equal to X so the sum of those two angles is X plus X is 2X and we know that 2x must be equal to 60 degrees because it is given us that angle ACB equals to 60 degrees. So we got that 2x equals to 60 degrees. Here we divide this equality by 2 and we will get that x equals to 30 degrees. x equals to 30 degrees. So, angle BCO equals to 30 degrees and angle ACO also equals to 30 degrees. Okay, so we will focus on the right triangle, triangle PCH. Okay. We will focus on the right triangle, triangle PCH. So, on the right triangle, triangle PCH, it is a right triangle because angle PHC equals to 90 degrees. So, on the right triangle PCH, we know that the sum of the angles is equal to 180 degrees. So, what, what is the sum of the angles of triangle 
PCH, it is actually 30 degrees plus this angle that is 90 degrees plus angle CPH the sum of those three angles must equal 280 degrees again the sum of the angles in triangle PCH equals to 180 degrees. So here we have 30 degrees plus 90 degrees is 120 degrees. Plus the size of angle CPH must be equal to 180 degrees. So here we will subtract 180 degrees from this equality and we will get that the size of angle CPH equals to 180 degrees minus 120 degrees, that is to say 60 degrees. So the size of angle CPH is 60 degrees. Okay, we will repeat on the same process on the other right triangle, triangle CHQ. So on the, on the right triangle CHQ, so on the right triangle CHQ, we know that the sum of the angles must be equal to 180 degrees. Therefore, 30 degrees plus the size of this angle that is 90 degrees plus the size of angle CQH must be equal to 180 degrees according to the rule that the sum of the angles in any triangle equals to 180 degrees, okay? So, 3, 30 degrees plus 90 degrees is 120 degrees, so I write it down. Plus the size of angle CQH must be equal to 180 degrees. So here we will subtract from this equality 180, 120 degrees and we will get that the size of angle CQH equals to 180 degrees minus 120 degrees is 60 degrees. Okay. So, angle CQH equals to 60 degrees. So, we found out that all the angles in the big triangle, triangle CPQ, equals to 60 degrees. Therefore, we can deduce that triangle CPQ is an equilateral triangle. Okay. Triangle CTQ is an equilateral triangle. So, in the next step we will focus on the right triangle, triangle ACO, on this right triangle, triangle ACO. 
So on the right triangle ACO, we know that tangents 30 degrees equals to AO over AC. On the right triangle, triangle ACO, tangent 30 degrees equals to AO over AC. But what is the value of AO? AO is the radius of the circle that equals to 5 units. Okay, AO equals to 5 units. over AC. So we got the tangents 30 degrees equals to 5 over AC. We know that tangents 30 degrees equals to 1 over root 3, so I will write it down. We will substitute tangents 30 degrees by 1 over root 3 equals to 5 over AC. So, in this equality, we will multiply this equality by AC and we will get that AC over root 3 equals to 5. Okay, AC over root 3 equals to 5. Here, we will multiply this equality by root 3 and we will get that AC equals to 5 times root 3 units. Okay. We got the result that AC equals to 5 times root 3 units. So we can write here that AC equals to 5 times root 3 units. We know that also AC equals to BC, so BC will be also equals to 5 times root 3 units. And we, have, we know that triangle CPQ is an equilateral triangle. We have already found that Triangle CPQ is an equilateral triangle. We actually have a rule. The rule states that the center of a circle Enclosed in a triangle is the in center of the triangle. Again, the rule states that the center of a circle enclosed in a triangle is the in center of the triangle. Okay? So, according to that rule, to this rule, we can say that 
point O, that is the center of the circle that is inside uh, triangle CPQ, is also the center of triangle CPQ. Okay, so we can derive from the rule that I mentioned one minute ago that the center of triangle CPQ is at point O. Okay. We can derive from the fact, from the rule that that says that the center of a circle enclosed in a triangle is the in center of the triangle that the center of triangle CPQ is at point O because the center of the circle that is enclosed inside triangle CPQ is at point O. So they have the same the rule states that the triangle and the circle that is enclosed inside the triangle have the same centers, that is to say both centers is at point O. Okay, and we have a second rule that states that the height from the center of an equilateral triangle, equilateral triangle Process the side. Okay, the whole states that the height of uh, the height from the center of an equilateral triangle causes the side. So we know that triangle CPQ is an equilateral triangle and we have already found out that point O is the center of this equilateral triangle, triangle CPQ. According to the word that I stated, if you draw from the center of triangle CPQ height to its sides, then this height will divide the side to two equal parts. We have here point O is the center of the equilateral triangle, triangle CPQ, and we have height OA. And, the, and according to the rule that I stated, the I the height crosses the side to two equal parts. So actually, according to the rule that I stated, AC equals to AP. AC equals to AP. And we know that AC equals to five times root three. So AP will be also equal to 5 times root 3. So AP will be also equal to 5 times root 3. And we have here, okay, so AC equals to AP, but we know that AC equals to 5 times root 3, so AP will be also equal to 5 times root 3. And the same thing is 
about the other side. We know that the height OB to side CQ divides side CQ to two equal parts. That is to say CB equals to BQ. CB equals to BQ. CB equals to BQ because the height OB divides the side CQ to two equal parts. That is to say CB equals to BQ. But we know that CB equals to five times root three. So BQ will be also equal to five times root three. Again, according to the rule that is stated, the height divides the side to two equal parts. This is to say CB equals to BQ, but we know that CB equals to five times root three, so BQ will be also equal to five times root three. Okay, and we also know that all the sides of an equilateral triangle are equal to each other. Therefore, AP equals to CB, PC equals to CQ equals to PQ. And uh, we know that the size PC equals to 5 times root 3 plus 5 times root 3. That is to say, PC equals to 10 times root 3. Therefore, PQ will be also equal to 10 times root 3. Okay? And we know that the height OH divides PQ to two equal parts. So, PH will be equal to HQ. PH equals to HQ. So, if PH equals to X, then HQ will be also equals to X. Okay? So, PQ equals to 2X. X plus X. PQ equals to 2X. But we also know that PQ equals to 10 times root 3. Okay, so we got that PQ equals to 2x equals to 10 times root 3. And if we divide this equality by 2, we will get that x equals to 5 times root 3. x equals to 5 times root 3 units. So here PH equals to 5 times root 3 and HQ that equals to X also equals to 5 times root 3. Okay? So what is the area of equilateral triangle triangle CPQ? Actually, if we have a triangle ABC, and in this triangle, triangle ABC, we know that a, the size of AB is A units and the size of AC is B units and we know that the angle between side AB and side AC is theta then the area of this triangle, triangle ABC will be equal to A times B times sinus theta over 2. Okay, so that is the area of this triangle that can be any triangle. So the area of this triangle equals to A times B times sine theta over 2. 
Okay, so if we calculate the area of equilateral triangle triangle CPQ according to this formula, what we will get? We will get that the area of equilateral triangle triangle CPQ equals to CP times CQ times sine 60 degrees over 2. Again, the area of equilateral triangle, triangle CPQ will be equal to CP times CQ times sine 60 degrees over 2. What is the size of CP? CP equals to 10 times root 3. All the sides of equilateral triangle are equal to each other. So the size of CP is 10 times root 3. And this is also the size of CQ. It is also 10 times root 3. So it will be 10 times root 3 squared. 10 times root 3 squared. Okay. Again, CP equals to 10 times root 3, but CQ also equals to CP, uh, 10 times root 3. So CP times CQ is 10 times root 3 squared. And sine 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. Root 3 over 2. Okay, sine 60 degrees is root 3 over 2, and we have to divide all by 2. So the area of equilateral triangle, triangle CPQ will be equal to 10 times root 3 squared over root 3. Here we will move the 2 to the numerator. 2 times 2 is 4. So the area of equilateral triangle, triangle CPQ equals to 10 times root 3 square times root 3 over 4, over 4 square units. So the area of equilateral triangle, triangle CPQ will be equal to 10 times root 3 square 10 square is 100 and root 3 square is 3 so 100 times 3 is 300 times root 4 root 3 over 4 So, the area of equilateral triangle, triangle CPQ equals to 300 over 4 times root 3 square units. Four, 300 over 4 is 75. So, I will write it down. So, the area of equilateral triangle, triangle CPQ equals to 75 times root 3 square units. Okay, the area of equilateral triangle, triangle CPQ equals to 75 times root 3 square units. Okay, in the next step we will find out the area of the circle and then we will subtract from the area of the big triangle, triangle CPQ, the area of the circle, and we will get those three areas. The area of the green shape, the area of this shape, and the area of this shape. Okay, so we will calculate the area of the circle 
the area of the circle equals to pi times r square the area of the circle equals to pi times r square okay r equals to 5 so the area of the circle equals to pi times 5 square that is 25 pi okay so the area of the circle equals to 25 pi okay in the next step I will paint this shape at the yellow color and I will paint this shape at the blue color so we will get that the area of the big triangle triangle CPQ minus the area of the circle will be equal to the area of the green shape plus the area of the yellow shape plus the area of the blue shape okay so we will calculate uh, so the area of triangle CPQ the area of triangle CPQ minus the area of the circle will be equal to the area of the green shape plus the area of the yellow shape plus the area of the blue shape Again, the area of the big triangle, triangle CPQ minus the area of the circle equals to the area of the green shape plus the area of the yellow shape plus the area of the blue shape. You can see it clearly from the drawing if you subtract the area of the big triangle, triangle CPQ uh, if you subtract the circle, the area of the circle from the area of the big triangle, triangle CPQ you will get the area of the green shape plus the area of the yellow shape plus the area of the blue shape okay so we will see what we will get uh, here so the area of triangle CPQ equals to 75 times root 3 square units minus the area of the circle that is 25 pi square units it equals to the, to the area of the green shape plus the area of the yellow shape plus the area of the blue shape 
plus the area of the blue shape. Okay, again, the area of triangle CPQ that is 75 times root 3 square units minus the area of the circle that is 25 pi square units equals to the area of the green shape plus the area of the yellow shape plus the area of the blue shape. Okay. But as you can see from the drawing, those three shapes are identical to each other. Those three shapes are identical to each other because they have exactly the same two sides, both of the three shapes have two sides, that each of them is equal to five times root three units, and the angle between those two sides that are equal to five times root three units is 60 degrees. We have here five times root three, five times root three, and 60 degrees. We have here five times root three, 5 times 2, 3, and 60 degrees. We have here in the blue shape 5 times 2, 3, 5 times 2, 3, and 60 degrees. So they are actually three identical shapes. Therefore, their areas are also equal to each other. Okay? So, if we actually define the area of each of those two of, of those three shapes as X so the area of the green shape equals to X the area of the yellow shape equals to X and the area of the blue shape equals to x square units, then the area of those three shapes will be equal to 3x. And if we divide it by 3, we will get the area of one shape. It could be the green shape, it could be the yellow shape, or it could be the blue shape. So, if we divide the total area of the three shapes by three, we will get the area of one shape that can, could be the green, the yellow, of the, or the blue shape. So when we we'll divide it by three, we will get one the area of one of them that could be also the green shape. So we will divide the sum of the three areas of the three shapes by three and we will get the area of one shape that is that could be also the green shape. Okay so the area actually I will define the area of each shape as X because of the fact that the area the areas of those shape of those shapes are equal to each other, I can define them as x. All of them will be equal to x because they are equal to each other. So if the area of the green shape equals to x, 
and the area of the blue shape also equals to x, and the area of the yellow shape also equals to x, we will get that the total areas of those three shapes equals to 3x. Okay? And 3x is actually the total area that is equal to 75 times root 3 minus 25 pi square units. Again, x is the area of one shape. Okay, x is the area of the one shape that could be also the area of the green shape. So 3x equals to 75 minus 75 times root 3 minus 25 pi square units. Okay, so now if we, I divide the total area to 3, I will get that x equals to 75 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3. That is actually x can be the, the area of the green shape, the area of the blue shape, or the area of the yellow shape. What is important to us that the x also could be the area of the green shape. So x equals to 75 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3. That could be, it is the area of one shape. That could be also the area of the green shape. So the area of the green shape that equals to x equals to 75 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. Okay? So the area of the green shape equals to x equals to 75 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. Okay, so the area of the green shape
So the area of the green shape equals to 75 wood free over 3, 75 over 3 is 25, so in total we will get that it equals to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. Again, the area of the green shape equals to 25 pi minus 25. The area of the green shape equals to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. Exactly like the same result as we found in the first method. Okay? So, in the next step, we will, I will present you a third method to find out the area of the green shape. Okay. So, we will define the center of the circle as point O, then we will join together points A and B by a straight line. And uh, we have the rule according to two tangents rule AC equals to BC. And uh, we have also the rule that states that in front of equal sides in triangle, there are equal angles. So if we focus on triangle ABC, we have two sides that are equal to each other. Therefore, the angles in front of those two sides must be also equal to each other. So the angle in front of AC is angle ABC and the angle in front of BC is angle BAC. So those two angles are equal to each other. So if we define one angle as Y, then the other angle will be also equal to Y. Okay, and we know that the sum of the angles in any triangle equals to 180 degrees. 
therefore, especially the sum of the angles in triangle ABC must be equal to 180 degrees. That is to say, uh, angle this angle that equals to 60 degrees plus angle Y plus angle Y must be equal to 180 degrees in triangle ABC. Again, in triangle ABC, the sum of the angles are equal to 180 degrees, that is to say 60 degrees plus y plus y equals to 180 degrees. So 60 degrees plus 2y equals to 180 degrees. Here we will subtract from this equality 60 degrees, we we'll get that 2y equals to 180 degrees minus 60 degrees is 120 degrees. We will divide this equality by 2, we we'll get that y equals to 120 degrees over 2 is 60 degrees. So we found out that angle y equals to 60 degrees. Okay? Angle Y equals to 60 degrees. So, this angle equals to 60 degrees, and also here, angle Y equals to 60 degrees. So, triangle ABC has three angles that are equal to 60 degrees, therefore triangle ABC triangle ABC is an equilateral triangle. Triangle ABC is an equilateral triangle. In the next step, we'll join together points O and B by a straight line. And again, I will not repeat about the uh, the fact that OB is the radius of this circle that equals to 5 units and uh, angle uh, CBO equals to 90 degrees can mark it like this This is this angle equals to 90 degrees, and we'll join together points A and O by a straight line. Again, OA is the radius of the circle that equals to 5 units, and uh, from the same reason, we know that. Angle CAO also is a right angle, that is to say it equals to 90 degrees. And uh, we will join together point C and O by a straight line.
and the We know that uh, we have the word that says that the sum of the angles in a quadrilateral equals to 360 degrees. Therefore, if we focus on quadrilateral a, B, C, A, B, C, O on quadrilateral A, B, C, O we know that the sum of the angles in quadrilateral A, B, C, O equals to 180 degrees therefore we have here 60 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus angle AOB it must be equal to 360 degrees according to the rule that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral equals to 360 degrees we will get this equality so here we have 60 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees is 240 degrees so I write it down plus angle AOB equals to 360 degrees. Here we we'll subtract from this equality 240 degrees and we will get that angle AOB equals to 360 degrees minus 240 degrees is 120 degrees. So this angle equals to 100 20 degrees okay and uh, we will prove that uh, Triangle AOC is going to go to triangle BOC. This triangle can go into this triangle. BO equals to AO equals to the radius of this circle that equals to 5 units. BO equals to AO that equals to the radius that equals to 5 units. E O equals to A O equals to the radius equals to 5 units. We also know that B C equals to A C according to two tangents theorem. B C equals to A C according to two tangents theorem. I explained the two tangents theorem in method one, so I will not repeat it. I'm going to repeat on this explanation to tangents 
en rem. BC equals to AC according to, to tangent theorem. And OC is a common side, it belongs to both triangles. So OC equals to OC. It is a common side. Okay. OC equals to OC. So we proved that all the sides of triangle AOC are equal to all the sides of triangle BOC. Therefore, those two triangles can go into each other according to side, side, side rule. Okay, triangle AOC is congruent to triangle BOC according to side, side, side rule. Okay. Triangle AOC is congruent to triangle BOC according to side, side, side rule. So from the fact that those two triangles can run to each other, we can derive that angle BCO equals to angle ACO. Angle BCO equals to angle, angle BCO equals to angle ACO. Okay, angle BCO equals to angle ACO according to the rule that corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. Okay, and if we define one of them as x, then the other one will be also equals to x. Okay, so actually both those two angles are equal to x. So both those two angles are equal to x, and uh, actually the sum of those two angles, x plus x, must be equal to 60 degrees, or 2x must be equal to 60 degrees, Two x must be equal to 60 degrees. If we divide this equality by two, we will, we will get that x equals to 30 degrees. X equals to 30 degrees. So this angle equals to 30 degrees, and angle. ACO also equals to 30 degrees. As you can see from the drawing, triangle ACO is a right triangle. Triangle ACO is a right triangle. So we focus on triangle on the right triangle, triangle ACO. This right triangle tangents 30 degrees equals to AO over AC. AO over AC, again, tangents 30 degrees equals to AO over AC. But we know that AO is the radius of the circle that equals to 5 units, so it is 5 over AC. So we got that tangents 30 degrees equals to 5 over AC. Okay, tangents 30 degrees equals to 5 over AC. 
We know that tangent 30 degrees equals to 1 over root 3, so I will write it down. Here we will multiply this equality by AC and we will get that AC over root 3 equals to 5. Okay, AC over root 3 equals to 5. Here we will multiply this equality by root 3 and we will get that AC equals to 5 times root 3 units. AC equals to 5 times root 3 units. So we can write here. that AC equals to 5 times root 3 units. So AC equals to BC, so BC also will be equal to 5 times root 3 units, and we have already proved that triangle ABC is an equilateral triangle, so AB also will be equal to 5 times root 3 units, so I will not write it because it will disturb the, to the drawing so what is the, the area of the equilateral triangle triangle ABC according to the formula that I presented in the second method According to the formula that I presented in the second method, the area of triangle ABC, I will present it again. If we have triangle ABC If we have triangle ABC And we know that size AB of triangle ABC equals to A units. Side AC of triangle ABC equals to B units. And the angle between side AB and side AC is theta. Then the area of this triangle, triangle ABC, will be equal to A times B times sine theta over 2 the area of triangle ABC equals to A times B times sine theta over 2 so according to that formula to this formula the area of equilateral triangle triangle ABC will be equal to AC AC times BC times sine 60 degrees over 2. Ok, 
Okay, so the area of the equilateral triangle, triangle ABC will be equal to AC times BC times sine 60 degrees over 2. But because of the fact that it is in equilateral triangle, AC equals to BC equals to 5 times root 3, so it is, it will be equal to Five times root three square sine sixty degrees. It is root three over two, all divided by two. So the area of triangle ABC equals to five times root three square times root 3 over 2 over 2. So here I will move this 2 to the numerator, to the denominator. And 2 times 2 is 4. So the area of triangle ABC will be equal to 5 times root 3 square times root 3 over 4. Okay. So, the area of equilateral triangle, triangle ABC equals to 5 times root 3 square is 25 times 3, 75 times root 3 over 4. Again, the area of triangle ABC equals to 75 times root 3 over 4 square units. Okay, so we found out that the area of triangle, equilateral triangle, triangle ABC, equals to 75 times root 3 over 4 square units. Okay, and uh, actually the area of the green shape equals to the area of triangle ABC minus the area of circular segment AB. This circular segment. So because the area of triangle ABC minus the area of circular segment AB equals exactly to the area of the green shape. So I write it down. The area of triangle ABC that we have already found out that is 75 times root 3 over 4 square units minus the area of circular segment AB equals to the area of the green shape. Again, the area of the equilateral triangle, triangle ABC, minus the area of circular segment AB equals to the area of the green shape. We have already found out the area of 
triangle ABC. So the only thing that is left to find is to find the area of circular segment AB. What is the area of circular segment AB? The area of circular segment AB equals to the area of sector AOB, this sector AOB, minus the area of triangle AOB. The area of this circular segment AB equals to the area of sector AOB minus the area of triangle AOB. Very simple. If you subtract the area of triangle AOB from the segment AOB, you will get exactly the area of circular segment AB. Very simple. So the area of circular segment AB equals to the area of sector AB minus the area of triangle AOB. Okay, that is the only thing that is missing to find out the area of the green shape. Okay, so the area of circular segment AOB will be equal to the area of sector AOB. What is the area of sector AOB? It is actually equal to the area of the circle pi, that is pi r square, times 120 degrees over 360 degrees. Okay. Again, the area of sector AOB, this sector, equals to pi r square, we know that r equals to 5, times 120 degrees, that is over 360 degrees, minus the area of triangle AOB, according to the formula that I presented to you, the area of triangle AOB equals to 5 times 5, times sine 120 degrees over 2 okay again the area of circular segment AB equals to the area of segment AOB, that is this expression, minus the area of triangle AOB, that is this expression. So we get that the area of circular segment AB. equals to pi r square, r equals to 5, so 5 square is 25, so 25 pi and 120 degrees over 360 degrees is 1 over 3. So we get in total that this expression equals to 25 over 3, okay? Actually, the area of segment AOB equals to 25 pi over 3 square units, 
minus the area of triangle AOB equals to 25, 25, 5 times 5 is 25, sine 120 degrees is root 3 over 2, all divided by 2. Okay, so in total we got that the area of circular segment AB equals to 25 pi over 3 minus 25 times root 3 over 2 times 2 is 4. So the area of circular segment AB equals to 25 pi over 3 minus 25 root 3 over 4 square units. We found out the area of circular segment AB. So the only thing that is left to do is to subtract the area of circular segment AB that we have already found that is equal to this expression from the area of triangle ABC that we have already found out that is actually equal to 75 times root 3 over 4 square units. So I will write again the formula for the area of the green shape that is the area of triangle ABC minus the area of circular segment AB that is the area of the green shape Again, the area the area of the green shape equals to the area of equilateral triangle triangle ABC minus the area of circular segment AB. You can see it from the Drawing it is very simple. If you subtract the area of circular segment AB from the area of triangle ABC, you will get exactly the area of the green shape. Very simple. So, we know that the area of triangle ABC equals to 75 times root 3 over 4 square units ok, the area of triangle ABC equals to 75 times root 3 over 4 square units and we will subtract it from the area of triangle ABC we will subtract the area of circular segment AB that is actually this expression That is actually this expression. So the, this is the expression for the area of circular segment AB and this is the area of triangle ABC we subtract one those two expressions and we will get the area of the green shape here we will open the brackets and we will get that The area of triangle ABC, that is 75 root 3 over 4 
square units minus 25 pi over 3 square units plus here we have minus and minus is plus plus 25 root 3 over 4 so actually that is the area of the green shape here 75 root 3 over 4 plus 25 root 3 over 4 is 100 root 3 over 4 so I write it down 100 root 3 over 4 minus 25 pi over 3 that is the area of the green shape so here we have 100 over 4 is 25 so I will write it down in total the final answer will be that the area of the green shape equals to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units that is exactly the sum, same result as we got in the first method and in the second method so the area of the green shape equals to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units okay so now I will summarize the lecture okay actually we wanted to find out the area of this green shape We wanted to find out the area of this green shape. And uh, we defined the center of this circle is point O. And then we know that uh, BC is tangent to the circle at point B and AC is tangent to the circle at point A. And the radius of this circle equals to 5 units and angle BCA equals to 60 degrees and we want to find out the area of the green shape so we join together points O and B and we join together points A and O by straight line so OB and OA are the radiuses of this circle because they start from the center of the circle and ends at the point of the circle itself therefore they are the radiuses of this circle and we also have a rule that a tangent to a circle is perpendicular to the radius drawn to its tangency so here we have tangent BC and we have radius that is drawn to the point of tangency that is to say to point B that is the point of tangency therefore the tangent is perpendicular to the radius therefore this angle is, that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees the same thing on the other side we have this radius that is drawn to the point of tangency that is to say to point A so the tangent CA will be perpendicular to the radius that is to say this angle equals to 90 degrees okay and uh, We also have a second rule that is two tangents 
Theorem two tangents theorem states that the lengths of two tangents from a common external point to a circle are equal. So if we have common external point P and from point P we draw two tangents to this circle, then the lengths of those two tangents will be equal to each other, that is to say PA equals to PB. So according to the two tangents theorem, we have external point, point C is the external common point in relation to the circle, and from point P we draw two tangents to the circle, tangent C A and tangent C B. Therefore, according to two tangents theorem, C A equals to C B. Okay? And we actually proved that triangle CBO equals to triangle C triangle COA equals to triangle COB because we have OB that equals to OC, both of those two line segments equals to the radiuses of the circle. We also know that BC equals CB equals to CA according to two tangents theorem. OC is a common side, so OC equals to OC. So we actually proved that all the sides of triangle CBO equals to all the sides of triangle CAO. Therefore, those two triangles are congruent to each other. Triangle AOC is congruent to triangle BOC according to side 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 rule. From the fact that those two triangles can go into each other, we can conclude that angle BCO equals to angle ACO. Those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. So because of the fact that those two angles are equal to each other, if we define one angle as x, then the other angle will also equal to x. Okay? So we know that x plus x equals to 60 degrees. So 2x equals to 60 degrees. And if we divide this equality by 2, we will get that x equals to 30 degrees. So this angle equals to 30 degrees, and this angle also equals to 30 degrees. So, in the right triangle, triangle CAO, this right triangle, triangle CAO, we know that tangent 30 degrees equals to AO over AC. Tangent 30 degrees equals to AO over AC, but we know that AO is the radius of the circle, it equals to 5 units. So we substitute AO by 5. So we got uh, this equality. And uh, from this equality we found out that the size of AC is actually 5 times root 3. The size of AC is 5 times root 3. And AC equals to BC, so BC also equals to 5 times root 3 units. Okay, so we, in triangle AOC, we know that AO equals to 5 units and AC equals to 5 times root 3 units, so we can calculate the area of triangle AOC, and the area of triangle AOC equals to the base of the triangle times the height to the base over 2. The base of the triangle is AO, the radius, of the circle and the height to the base is AC. We know that uh, the values of A uh, of AO and the values of AC. Okay, AO equals to 5 and AC equals to 5 times root 3. So we found out that the area of triangle AOC equals to 25 times root 3 over 2 square units. And uh, because of the fact that triangle AOC is uh, can go into triangle BOC. 
their areas also equal to each other. Okay, so we can write down that the area of triangle AOC is equal to the area of triangle BOC because of the fact they can go into each other. So what is the area of quadrilateral ABCO? The area of this quadrilateral equals to the area of triangle is ACO plus the area of triangle BCO. Okay, the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to the area of triangle AOC plus the area of triangle BOC. But we know that the area of triangle AOC equals to the area of triangle BOC, so we can substitute here the area of triangle BOC with the area of triangle AOC, and we will get that the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to two times the area of triangle AOC. Okay? So, we have already found out that the, the area of triangle AOC equals to 25 times root 3 over 2 square units. So, we multiply it by 2 and we got the area of quadrilateral ABCO. The area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to 25 times root 3 square units. Okay, so we know that the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to 25 times root 3 square units. But what is the area of the green shape? The area of the green shape equals to the area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector ABO. The area of quadrilateral ABO is this area, and if you subtract from it the area of sector ABO, you will get exactly the area of the green shape. Okay, so the area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector ABO will be exactly equal to the area of the green shape. So, we have already know that the area of, of quadrilateral ABCO equals to 25 times root 3 square units, and the only thing that is left to do to, in order to find out the area of the green shape is to calculate the area of sector ABO. The area of sector ABO equals to the area of the circle, that is pi r square, minus a, angle ABO over 60 degrees. So, we have to find out the size of this angle. And we have a rule that says that the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral is equal to 360 degrees. Okay, the sum of the angles in quadrilateral ABCO will be equal to 360 degrees according to this rule. So here 60 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus the size of this angle must be equal to 360 degrees. Okay. So sixty degrees plus ninety degrees plus ninety degrees plus the size of angle the size of angle A or B must be equal to three hundred sixty degrees according to the rule that I stated. So from this uh, simple equation we got that the area of triangle ABO equals to one hundred twenty degrees. The area of angle AOB equals to one hundred twenty degrees. So the area of sector ABO equals to pi r squared, that is the area of the circle, times 120 degrees over 360 degrees. Uh, r equals to 5, so pi r squared is 25 pi. And 120 degrees over 360 degrees is 1 over 3. So it, in total we got that the area of sector ABO equals to 25 pi over 3 square units. 
and the area of quadrilateral ABCO equals to 25 times root 3 square unit. So the only thing that is left to do is to subtract the area of sector ABO from the area of uh, quadrilateral ABCO. Okay, so again, the area of the green shape equals to the area of quadrilateral ABCO minus the area of sector ABO. So the area of uh, quadrilateral ABCO is 25 times root 3 square units and the area of sector ABO is 25 pi over 3 square units. Oh, so in total the area of the green shape equals to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. Okay, so that was the first method uh, to find out the area of this green shape. Then we found the area of the green shape in a second method. And uh, so here we define the center of the circle as point O. We connect it together points A and O. AO is the radius. And this, and this angle equals to 90 degrees according to the rule that I stated. And and OB equals to the radius of this circle and this angle is 90 degrees and uh, I actually proved and proved that uh, triangle AOC is uh, is congruent to triangle COB because AC equals to BC according to two tangents theorem, AO equals to BO, it is the radius of the circle, and CO equals to CO is a common side, so we prove that all the sides of triangle POC equals to all the sides of triangle AOC, therefore those two triangles can go into each other according to side, side, side rule. Okay, triangle AOC is going to triangle BCO according to side, side, side rule. Therefore, from the fact that those two triangles can go into each other, those two angles must be equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. So, if this angle is X, this angle will be also equal to X. Okay. So those two angles are equal to x. So x plus x must be equal to 60 degrees. So 2x equals to 60 degrees. We divided this equality by x and we got that x equals to 30 degrees. So this angle is 30 degrees and this angle is also 30 degrees. Okay. And then in the right triangle, uh, then we actually uh, extended CO until it touches the circle at point H. After that, we draw ten. We drew tangent to this circle at point H. We know that the tangent is perpendicular to the radius that is drawn to the point of tangency, therefore this angle is 90 degrees and this angle is also 90 degrees. And uh, we have already found out that this angle equals to 30 degrees and this angle also equals to 30 degrees. So we focus on triangle PCH, this triangle, we know that in this right triangle, 
30 degrees plus 90 degrees plus the size of this angle equals to 180 degrees. Okay, 30 degrees plus 90 degrees plus the size of angle CPH equals to 180 degrees. So, from this simple equality we got that the size of angle CPH is 60 degrees. This angle equals to 60 degrees. Then we repeat it on the same process on the other side of uh, triangle CHQ. It is a right triangle. We know that this angle is 30 degrees, this angle is 90 degrees. And this is the missing angle, but the total sum of the three angles must be equal to 180 degrees. So 30 degrees plus 90 degrees plus the size of angle CQH must be equal to 180 degrees. So from this simple inequality, we got that the size of angle CQH is also 60 degrees. So, so we found out that all the angles of the big triangle, uh, CPQ, are equal to 30 degrees, uh, are equal to 60 degrees. Therefore, we found that triangle CPQ is an equilateral triangle. Okay. Then we focus on the right triangle, triangle ACO. We know that tangent 30 degrees equals to AO over AC. Okay, tangent 30 degrees equals to AO over AC. But we know that AO equals to 5. And tangent 30 degrees equals to 1 over root 3. So from this simple equality, we got that AC equals to 5 times root 3 units. Okay, so AC equals to 5 times root 3 units. Okay, and then we so we know that triangle CPQ is an equilateral triangle and uh, we have all that the center of a circle enclosed or inscribed in a triangle is the in center of the triangle. So the rule states that the center of a circle that is inside a triangle, the center of the circle is point O. Point O is also the center of the triangle that uh, enclosed the, the, this circle. Okay? The triangle that contains this circle. So O is, according to, to that rule, O is also the center of triangle CPQ. Okay, and we have also the second rule that states that the height from the center of an equilateral triangle crosses the side. Okay, here we have again the height from the center of an equilateral triangle crosses the side. So this is a equilateral triangle and the center of it is O. From point O we draw here three heights. According to that rule the height crosses the side. So this height OA divides the side CP to two equal sides. That is to say AC equals to AP. So if AC equals to five times root three, then AP will be also equal to will be also equal to five times root three. And the same thing here. The height OV crosses CQ divides CQ to two equal parts. That is to say CB equals to to BQ. So if CB equals to 5 times root 3, then BQ must be also equals to 5 times root 3. Then 
we know that all the sides of an equilateral triangle are equal to each other, so if PC equals to 10 times root 3, then PQ also equal to equal to 10 times root 3, and we know that the height OH divides PQ to two equal sides, so, so PH equals to HQ, and if PH equals to S, then HQ also equal to X. Or we have the equality that X plus X equals to 10 times root 3. Okay, 2X equals to 10 times root 3. We divide this equality by root 3. And we found out that PH equals to 5 times root 3. And HQ also equals to 5 times root 3. And then we have the rule that says that the area of this triangle equals to A times B times sine theta over 2. So we actually calculated the area of equilateral triangle triangle CPQ according, according to this formula. And uh, the area of equilateral triangle triangle CPQ according to that formula equals to CP times CQ times sine 60 degrees over 2. But the, in the equilateral triangle CP equals to CQ equals to 10 times root 3, so it is 10 times root 3 square. Sine 60 degrees is root 3 over 2, all divided by 2, so the area of equilateral triangle triangle CPQ equals to 10 times root 3 square times root 3 over 4 square units. So, after solving the previous equality, we got that the R of equilateral triangle triangle CPQ equals to 75 times root 3 square units. And then we found the area of the circle that is pi r square, r equals to 5, so the area of the circle equals to 25 pi square units. And from the drawing, you can see that the area of the big triangle minus the area of the circle equals to the area of the green shape plus the area of the yellow shape plus the area of the blue shape. Okay, so the area of the big triangle, equilateral triangle, triangle CPQ, minus the area of the circle, equals to the area of the green shape, plus the area of the yellow shape, plus the area of the blue shape. Okay? So, we found that, we have already found that the area of the big triangle CPQ is 75 times root 3 square units, and the area of the circle is 25 pi square units. So, we subtracted one uh, we subtracted those two expressions and we know that the area of triangle CPQ minus the area of the circle equals to the area of the green shape plus the area of the yellow shape plus the area of the blue shape. Okay? The area of the triangle minus the area of the circle equals to the area of the green shape plus the area of the yellow shape plus the area of the blue shape. Okay? But because of the fact that those two triang uh, those, those two sh three shapes are identical to each other. Uh, they have also the same area. So if we define the area of one of them as x, the area of three of them will be equal to three x. Okay, so the area of those three shapes in total equals to 3x. That is this expression. But if we divide 3x by 3, we will get the area of one shape that would be the area of the green shape. So actually 3x over 3 that equals to x is the area of the green shape. So the area of the green shape actually equals to the total area of those three shapes that is this expression over 3 because 3x over 3 is x 
that is the error of one shape that will be the error of the green shape. So the error of the green shape equals to the total area of the three shapes over three. So the area of the green shape equals to the total area of the three shapes over three. That is to say, it equals to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. Okay? So that was the second way to find out the area of the green shape. Then we found the area of the green shape in a third way. We actually connected together points A and B. We define the center of the circle as point O. We connected together points O and B. O B is the radius, it equals to five units. We connected together points A and O. O A equals to the radius of the circle that is five units. And we connected together points A and B. We know that this angle equals to 60 degrees and we also know that AC equals to BC according to two tangents theorem. Therefore, from the fact that AC equals to BC, we know that in front of equal sides in the, the triangle, there are equal angles. So if, if we relate to triangle ABC, it has two sides that are equal to each other, AC equals to BC. So in front of those two sides, there are equal angles. So those angles are equal to each other. So if we define one angle as Y, then the other angle will be also equal to Y. So in triangle ABC, we know that 60 degrees plus Y plus Y equals to 180 degrees. 60 degrees plus y plus y equals to 180 degrees, or 60 degrees plus 2y equals to 180 degrees. We divided this equality by 2 and we got that the size of angle y is 60 degrees. Angle y equals to 60 degrees. So this angle equals to 60 degrees and this angle is also equal to 60 degrees. Uh, and uh, Therefore, triangle ABC is an equilateral triangle. Okay, and we also know that uh, the sum of the angles in any quadrilateral equals to 360 degrees. So 60 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees must be equal, plus this, the size of this angle must be equal to 360 degrees. Okay. 60 degrees plus 90 degrees plus 90 degrees plus the size of angle AOB equals to 360 degrees. From this simple equality, we got that the size of angle AOB equals to 120 degrees. The size of this angle is 120 degrees. And then we proved that triangle AOB is congruent to triangle OBC because we know that. AO equals to BO equals to the radius of this circle. We know that BC equals to AC according to two tangent theorem and OC equals to OC. It is the current side, so triangle AOC is congruent to triangle BOC. Therefore, those two angles are equal to each other according to the rule that corresponding angles in congruent triangles are equal to each other. So if this angle is x, the other angle must be also equal to x. So we define one angle as x. So the other angle must be also equal to x. So we know that x plus x must be equal to 60 degrees. That is to say 2x must be equal to 60 degrees. We divided this equality to by 2 and we got that x equals to 30 degrees. So 
this angle is 30 degrees and this angle is also 30 degrees. Then in triangle, the right triangle, triangle ACO, we know that triangle 30 degrees equals to AO over AC. Triangle 30 degrees equals to AO over AC. But we know that AO equals to 5 units, so we solve this simple inequality and we got that AC equals to 5 times root 3. And AC equals to BC, so BC also equals to 5 times root 3 units. And we know that the area on this triangle, or that can, it could be any triangle, equals to A times B times sine theta over 2. We found out the area of triangle ABC according to this formula. So the area of triangle ABC, that is, we have already proved that is equilateral triangle, equals to AC times BC times sinus 60 degrees over 2. But we know that AC equals to 5 times root 3, that also equals to BC. So AC times BC is 5 times root 3 squared. So we found out that the area of target ABC equals to 75 times root 3 over 4 square units. Okay? And we know that the area of triangle ABC minus the area of circular segment AB equals to the area of the green shape. Again, the area of the equilateral triangle, triangle ABC minus the area of circular segment AB equals to the area of the green shape. But what is the area of circular segment AB? The area of circular segment AB equals to the area of sector AOB minus the area of triangle AOB. It's equals to the area of sector AB, AOB minus the area of triangle AOB. Okay, so the area of circular segment AB equals to the area of sector AOB that equals to pi r squared times 120 degrees over 360 degrees minus the area of triangle AOB that equals to 5 times 5 times sine 120 degrees over 2. Okay, so the area of circular segment AB equals to 25 pi over 3 minus 25 times root 3 over 2 times 2, or the area of circular segment AB equals to 25 pi over 3 minus 25 times root 3 over 4 square units. So uh, the area of triangle ABC minus the area of circular segment AB equals to the area of the green shape. So the area of triangle ABC equals to 75 times root 3 over 4 square units, and the area of circular segment AB equals to this expression. So, we opened the brackets here, and we found out that the area of the green shape equals to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. So, the area of the green shape equals to 25 times root 3 minus 25 pi over 3 square units. Okay? Thank you very much.